This is Energy Perspectives. Welcome. I am Tony Aboru. On this program, we look at energy matters as it affects us in Nigeria, as well as energy issues that impact us in Nigeria. And of course, we look at whether it's electrical energy, it's oil and gas, as well as renewable energy. Join us and enjoy the conversations. Hello, this is Energy Day Perspectives. Welcome. I am Tony Abolo. Today, we'll be dealing with breaking down so many myths and some wrong foundational information you've always been getting, things you've been hearing and learning from the Western world. And for years, we've been fed with so many myths. I'll, we'll just give you some examples, like carbon emissions carbon footprints, moving from fossil fuels to renewable energy or cleaner energy. Well, come to think of it, have we, have we been sold dummies by the white man? Because they themselves are seemingly discovering something else and seeing different things. And today we'll be having an interesting conversation with Professor Onye Koso Idigbe with Professor Onye Koso Idigbe of the Department of Petroleum Engineering, University of Benin, who will be enlightening us on so many of those things that he considers myths that we have been learning both in school and perhaps learning from the media. Things like petroleum will soon finish. And that petroleum, as you know, is a renewable energy first. Does petroleum come from fossil or does it come from coal? That's the origin, correct? No. Uh, you see, what happens is that, let me uh, come in and say that uh, the misinformation is not on the part of the people. The misinformation is on, is on part of the politicians and the so-called money backs all over the place who are misinforming the general public as to what does petroleum mean what is energy, the so-called renewable energies, or what are the ones polluting everywhere? So let us define everything right. The people are not the ones who are causing the problem. The problems are being caused by the so-called elites. Elites, reporters, elites, politicians, elites, the so people who, are not, who don't know, but who come and keep telling everybody that this is what it is and it is not what it is. So it is easy for them, because they have all the means, the media, they have the money, they have everything it takes to be able to what impact on the people what they want the people to hear, and they and if you come up and say no 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 you can't do that, then uh, you start fighting against the so-called uh, people established, people like uh, Bill Gates and others who have been misinforming the people about uh, oil will soon finish. You know there was a time they were saying oil will finish. Oil is not going to finish. We'll come back to that because that's an interesting issue that we want to extend. Oil will not finish. Oil is here to stay. Like I keep telling people, they are now we hear about renewables. Yeah. They are, to me, I define and I keep defining there are only three types of renewables. The first renewable is the atom. Atom is the basis of the creation. Alpha to Omega. You may say, what is A is Alpha, T to Omega. The beginning and the ending. The next renewable is Sun, the solar. If you can, if we can harness energy properly from it effectively. But we don't have the technology to do that. We don't know how it's going to be sustainable to do that. The next renewable, like I've been telling people, is petroleum. But they have been telling us all kind of misinformation. The first thing misinformation was the oil was going to finish. But nobody's talking about that now, now because everybody in the whole world is now finding oil. They are trying to fight in South China Sea because of oil. The British went to war with Argentina because of oil in the Falkland Islands. There's oil everywhere. Before, it was exclusively maybe Nigeria, Egypt, some few places that had oil in Africa. But now everybody is having oil, Republic of Benin, Togo, Ghana. They say Ghana won't have oil. Ghana has a lot of oil. Now, how soon will petroleum 
otherwise sometimes called oleum. And that word oleum or oil comes from the Latin word petra, which is rock. And so if oil comes from rock, how long will it last and how soon will it run off? No, petroleum will never run out because one, petroleum is a renewable fuel, a renewable energy, is a renewable. If we redefine petroleum not as a fossil fuel, but as a thermochemical form of energy, thermo, mm -hmm. chemical form, 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 form of energy coming from the core or semi-core of the earth, they will know that the thing is going to be abundantly available for us. Forever? Forever! <laughs> but you find that because we have erroneously defined petroleum before as a fossil fuel and it's going to finish, remember? Mm -hmm. You say it's going to finish, but it's not finishing. They are not talking about not finishing anymore. Before it was said it's going to finish, a lot of people were trying to do petroleum engineering earlier. They say, oh God, if petroleum is going to finish, why do we have to do petroleum? They found that petroleum will not finish. So they started going and doing petroleum. Now, Definition of petroleum as a fossil fuel. What is a fossil fuel? A fossil fuel simply says that something that is come or that has come from bio sources. Bio means life. Mm -hmm. Now you now suddenly find that everywhere in the whole world has petroleum or natural gas. Now they told us that there's what we call geologic age. The geological age of the Mesozoic era, principally Cretaceous period of Mesozoic era, that was when the so-called dinosaurs got extinct. Not so. How many dinosaurs died? They got buried. The oils got extracted from them. There was chemical kerogen process or whatever, and it metamorphosed into oil and gas. The question now is, what is the number of dinosaurs that died, the volume of oil that came from them, that have given us the so-called volumes and volumes of barrels and barrels of oil we have found in Nigeria, China, America, everywhere. So it's not feasible. I will now go back to the origin of the so-called fossil fuel. The fossil fuel originated from the fact that the earlier sources of oil came from the tar. The tar sands. Mm -hmm. You can get them in uh, what? In uh, China, you can get them in uh, some few places where if you go to, even in uh, Ondo here, Ondo tar sands. You can go and see them, da da da. So they took it. The Chinese had a way of refining and getting oil while they use in rubbing their bodies and doing, and doing some medi medicines and all that, that. But the major first thing where the so-called fossil fuel came into being was in America, Pennsylvania, where they drilled a well, a very shallow well, and they found that what they got from there was very dark, dark, black. So that oil or the oils were char characterized as black oils. But we have known over the years that if you have pressure temperature, and the pressure temperature is going this way, which means it's increasing, you're going down, mm -hmm. you know the color of the oils will keep changing from very dark to black, from black to light, from light to very light, from dark to dark. So what am I saying? Black oils, volatile oils, before you go to gas, very deep. Now, they know that. They know that the so-called volatile oils are not biochemical oils. They are thermochemical oils. But like as you said, you take a particular definition, the Oibo man, whoever coined it, stays with it. Now the question is, what is the meaning of petroleum? Petroleum simply means rock oil. Petra, oleum. Petra means rock. Oleum means oil. Petra, that's rock oil. I asked the question. We have over the years found that petroleum is not simply oil. Petroleum is of three phases. The solid phase, the tar, mm -hmm. the liquid phase, the oils, and the gaseous phase, the gas. Like as I said, starting from here, moving this way, from black oils to volatile oils to gas, not so. Yeah. Now, I ask a question, where do we put the gas? If it must be remain petroleum, which means rock oil. From the old definition, they say chemically 
Petroleum was just simply oil. But we say no, there's gas. Do we call it petrol gas? So you 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 understand? So yeah. I I keep asking them, no, no. You have to find a way to redefine. That's why I came up with my molecular definition of petroleum. That as long as you have the five elements, which the Americans are proving to be very abundant in the core or the earth, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and then you have the conditions right, pressure, temperature, bacteria, whether you want to call them microbes mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. that petroleum will continue to be formed. What is petroleum? We have refined it as hydrocarbon also, mm -hmm. compound of carbon and hydrogen. With some other elements, with some other few things there, because I remember I said five elements. So if carbon combines with hydrogen, you have hydrocarbon also. Yeah. Carbon can combine with what? Oxygen. You have oxides of carbon. Hydrogen can combine with oxygen, you have oxides of hydrogen. So nitrogen, the same thing, sulfur, the same thing. Then, when you have a hydrocarbon, carbon, hydrogen, they can afford to combine with sulfur, they have what to call the sulfides or the what? They have the carbons or what to call the sulfur, the what? The uh, uh, methyl, methyl uh, uh, surfactant, ethyl surfactant, uh, this, uh, this, uh, you understand? But, or mecaptan, I mean. So what I am trying to tell them is that the mecaptans are simply sulfides. The sulfides are there because it's abundant of sulfur. So when the hydrocarbons combine with sulfur, they form the mecaptans. Just like hydrogen sulfide, H2S. H2S simply means the sulfide of what? Hydrogen. Which is the same thing, I can put it as HSH, which is hydrogen mecaptan, like as I said. But they have decided to write it the other way. So in short, what I'm saying is that there's been misinformation about petroleum. Petro petroleum is not necessarily for self well. Petroleum is what? Two generating categories. One, biochemically generated, the so-called fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. Secondly, thermochemically generated, the ones down there, which the, some people have already formed research now and have, they have verified that 90% of the petroleum that is found is thermochemically generated because they have found abundance of those five elements. Back again to the question of sources of renewable energy. Um, we've been sold the dummy that electric cars will soon replace petroleum-driven cars. And I wonder what your views are on this. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you think the so-called electric cars or electric cars will be able to go everywhere the whole world as so-called petroleum-based cars have gone? The answer is no. There are some people, group of people, I don't want to call them, who want to sell their technologies. They want to sell their batteries. They want to sell technologies and so many things they want to sell. They are the ones who have the money. They have bought over the media. They have done that. So what they have done now is give the people the misinformation. Petroleum is polluting everywhere. Let's leave petroleum alone. Let's go into electric cars. The question I keep asking them, how are you going to generate the electricity? Because right now in Europe, somebody has an electric car and it goes from about maybe some few kilometers you have to recharge. Where you are recharging, what produces electricity for you to recharge? Petroleum. petroleum. But you are telling people that petroleum is the one polluting everywhere. You want to sell your technology, you want to do this, you want to do that. Like as I said, there are only three sustainable renew renewables. The atom, the basis of the universe, Solar, sunny, the sun, and then petroleum, because petroleum, if we redefine it as a thermochemical generated form of energy, thermo, the rocks. Another word so often bandied, and you hear it everywhere, we talk about carbon capture. Now, when you talk about carbon capture, is it possible to capture carbon in nature or technologically? There's nothing like carbon capture. No, so when they carbon capture is a misinformation. <laughs> you know, you know that's what one of the things of the last uh, uh, napkins we went to the last uh, uh, Naish national uh, uh, conference we went to in Lagos. A young man came up and was make, presenting a paper, and he said, 
carbon capture. I stopped him and I told him that's a misinformation. People at the panel say, Prof, we know it's a misinformation. This is what people are saying. I said, no, it must be said right. What they are trying to capture is not carbon. What they are trying to capture is carbon dioxide. So when they say carbon capture, decarbonization, that's rubbish. Because we are in elementary chemistry, when we are taught in what, in secondary school, we are taught there are two abundant elements in the universe, hydrogen and carbon. Then why are we trying to decarbonize? Why are we trying to remove carbon? What has carbon done to us? Nothing. Carbon is in, diamond is carbon, graphite is carbon, graphene is carbon, silicon is uh, carbon, is everywhere, carbon is everywhere. Carbon is in my hair, carbon is in your clothes, carbon is everywhere. So how are we going to decarbonize? How are we going to remove carbon? What we are trying to remove is carbon dioxide. Carbon is an element. Carbon dioxide is a compound. There are two different things. The people who are misinforming everybody should come up and tell us the right things. If you tell us carbon capture, I said no. It's carbon dioxide capture. And to what use, anyway? Uh, well, carbon dioxide capture, we are the ones who cause the problem. When I say we, I mean the white man in his so-called quest for development. The, the almighty God created us, created many things, humans, plants, and other things. He knows that the humans will breathe out carbon dioxide, and also. Yep. And he knows that if you leave the carbon dioxide, there will be a problem. So he made the plants to take the carbon dioxide, combine them with photosynthesis, and give us oxygen and other things. The oxygen will breathe. So when the oxygen goes to ozone layer and keeps the ozone layer going, and that, that. Oh, you man said no. They cut all the trees in New York. They build skyscrapers. Skyscrapers. They cut all the trees in London. Bam! 100 story building. They cut all the trees in uh, Moscow. That's in uh, what? Uh, Moscow, uh, Russia, yeah. everywhere. So, what happened? Where are the trees that are supposed to take up the carbon dioxide and use photosynthesis to give us oxygen? They are no more there. The carbon dioxide that will breathe out, where does it go to? Of course, it forms a cloud and start giving us problems. And secondly, as time goes on, more population comes in also. Yeah. So more carbon dioxide is being breathed out. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And then if you breathe out more carbon dioxide, there are no plans to take them. What happens? There are problems. There's an echo, echo imbalance. Yes. Well, it's been a mouthful, and uh, we hope it's been a lot of education for many of our viewers, but with you busting the meats that uh, people have always toyed with. But it seems to see the Oyibo man has discarded some of those myths and are beginning to think of reforestation like they're doing in the DRC and also in the Amazon forest as a way to protect the ecosystem. Isn't that correct? Now, recently, not quite long ago, some of us went to Paris. Total Energies invited us. I was one of the three persons that went from Nigeria. I was the only person that challenged Total in Paris, when they were talking nonsense about this uh, carbon, this carbon dye. They were trying to, you uh, sure they, 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 they stopped short of calling me a black monkey or a black man. <laughs> and I told them that I have my ticket, that uh, all they can do is to put me in the next available plane. I come back to Nigeria. I'm not asking to stay in Paris, but the right things must be said. I told them, I told them that they are the ones who have caused the problem. They are the ones who are trying to carry everybody to see, oh, there's a problem, how do we do that? It's very simple. This, when I told them that the only way we can solve this carbon dioxide problem mm, mm -hmm. is by what? Photosynthesis. Ah, they thought I was joking. But it was, that was a natural process. Eh? Now, recently, recently, the same total energies have just acquired thousands of hectares of land in DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo. What are they going to do? They are going to put up plants to mimic what is going on in Amazon. Because the Amazon now takes, is the one taking 25% of the CO2. So they want to create another 25% to join. Because they recognize that the only thing that can solve this uh, emission of this is by natural plants. That's what I keep telling them. Now, the problem is that they don't want to come up and say we have made mistakes. 
The Igbo man doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to own up that he has made a mistake. He's the one who's causing the problem all over the world. An interesting point that I think we'd like to explore is to know whether fossil fuels are, has any future. Renewable energy. Because you have stated constantly that yes. petroleum uh -huh. is a source of renewable energy. That can sustainably solve problems of the world at a massive scale. If I go to and say biomass, mm -hmm. how many people can biomass alone solve the problems of the University of Benin? In terms of creating energy? In terms of creating energy. You can't do that. You can't even create enough electricity to do that. Not talking of the other things that petroleum does. Now, let me ask you a question. The, I, the IOCs, international companies, the MDs, the CEOs and everything, they are now listening to these politicians and that. They are not taking what they are taking seriously. Because as I'm talking to you, there's a massive asset development going on now, deep offshore, of Namibia. Billions and billions of barrels of oil and gas. Shell, they're there. You go to Guyana, ExxonMobil is there. We shell. Billions and billions. You go to South China Sea, as I said earlier. The Chinese are quarreling with what? The Filipinos, the, this and that. Because of oil and gas there. The Vietnamese, because of oil and gas. Um, uh, Britain fought uh, Argentina and Falkland because of oil and gas. The oil and gas will continue. It will stop. It will cease. My problem is that the white man thinks he's very smart. Like I told people, the white man is smart. We're all smart. You see the engine, the combustion engine. Mm. What I had expected the, black, the white man to do is to how he would take the fuel, mix it with the oxygen, mm -hmm. combust it, not so, mm -hmm. and then somewhere in the chambers, in the chambers mm -hmm. you will create a situation whereby what comes out is not the oxides of carbon, but what comes out is water. He can do that. It's chemistry. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And if he had done that, this idea of uh, polluting everywhere will not come. There will not be. The problem of say, ah, petroleum is polluting everywhere. The cars are polluting everywhere. Now we are going to bring in electric cars. We are going to bring it tomorrow. They say they are going to bring in hydrogen cars. You know there are hydrogen buses all over the place. But the question is, how sustainable is the hydrogen fuel? That even if you build everything, hydrogen vehicle, small, big, bus, this uh, plane everywhere, how are you going to produce the hydrogen to be able to sustain the volume? The same thing goes with electricity and this and that. The only thing that can, com can do that comfortably is what? Petroleum. Petroleum. Crude oil, natural gas. You know, the white man came up and told us initially there's what we call greenhouse gases. Yeah. And he characterized one of the greenhouse gases as methane. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't know that methane is natural gas. It's not saying let us use natural gas as a transition fuel for the so-called energy mix and this and that. And I asked them, ah, I thought you told us that methane is a greenhouse gas. Methane is one polluting with CO2 and uh, nitrogen oxides of nitrogen and this and that. Why are you not coming up and say we want to use uh, natural gas by the burning of crude oils? Not so. Mm. Eh? Mm. And I tell them that if you have some crude oils, you have some natural gases. This why I have what to call characterization of crude oils, characterization of natural gas. Nigerian natural gas is characterized as sweet and what? Non acidic. It is sweet because it doesn't smell. It doesn't have what? Sulfur compounds in it. Hydrogen sulfide and this and that. Mm -hmm. It is non acidic because CO2, carbon monoxide, they are not there or they are minimized. So if you burn Nigerian gas and you burn Indonesian gas, Indonesian gas gives you a problem because there's a lot of CO2 there. And like as I said, the Oyubama has been misinforming people. Carbon capture. It's not carbon capture. It's capture of carbon dioxide. Carbon is an element. Carbon dioxide is a compound. They are two different things. And the so-called sequestration is the storage. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. And why do you want to store it, store it underground? When God has put in place man, plant, man breathes out carbon dioxide, plant takes it, not so. Mm -hmm. 
photosynthesis, yeah. sun is there. The natural yeah. process. It stores it and brings it and gives us oxygen, which we breathe, mm -hmm. and gives us uh, what? Carbohydrates, mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And then some of the excess oxygen goes to the ozone layer. But the carbon dioxide that the Oboma has cut down all the trees goes down, builds up a, what, a cloud and start depleting the ozone layer. They're not telling us the sun is coming. They're the ones who have destroyed everything. Well, next week we'll be continuing this conversation with Professor Onyeko Dibe, and we'll ask then, will we in the emerging world, or what we better should call the global south, should we not change our technologies and find different pathways to development? A very, very valid question to ask. And we hope you have been enlightened so much about energy, energy renewal or renewable energy, and carbon emission, carbon capture, all those languages you've been playing with all these years. I'm sure you've had better understanding. On energy day perspectives, thanks for watching. I'm Tony Abolo. See you next week. This is Energy Perspectives. Welcome. I am Tony Abolo. On this program, we look at energy matters as it affects us in Nigeria, as well as energy issues that impact us in Nigeria. And of course, we look at whether it's electrical energy, it's oil and gas, as well as renewable energy. Join us and enjoy the conversations.